Hello, STAIR students. My name is Ms. Johnson, and I'm so excited to be reading a story to you all today. The name of this story is Substitute Creature by Chris Gall. So let's get started. Some very nice illustrations here. For Mackenzie and Addison, our newest little monsters. windswept day in late October, the students of Miss Jenkins' class arrived to surprise to a surprise at school. Substitute teacher day, announced Peyton. Amanda giggled and scribbled on the chalkboard. Luke performed the circus act. Gavin laughed like a mad scientist. Then, at precisely eight o'clock, the door to the classroom creaked open. The substitute entered the room. Good morning to all. My name's Mr. Creature. Ms. Jenkins has asked me to step in as teacher. She claims that this class has grown quite out of hand. So I'm here to warn you we're taking a stand. Amanda snickered at the way he spoke. Gavin opened a fresh box of tacks. The creature glared. If you're plotting some mischief, please don't even try. In the back of my head, you'll find more than one eye. Luke drew an eye of his own on his own forehead. Mr. Creature didn't think that was funny at all. And here's the eye that he drew on his forehead. Attention all scamps, all rascals and fools. For 49 years, I visited schools. I've collected some tales whose lessons are grave about boys and girls who didn't behave. They'll give you the goosebumps, they'll shiver your skin. Now pay strict attention, it's time to begin. And with that, Mr. Creature reached into his bag. Then he pulled out a tattered file. First we meet Keith, a hungry young lad. Snacking on glue was a habit he had. He ate so much glue, no amount was too much, that he started to stick to all he would touch. Soon, no one could find the boy underneath all of the objects that stuck to poor Keith. Peyton's huge backpack fell over and a dozen glue sticks rolled out. Mr. Creature looked very unhappy. Have you heard about Sarah? She's crammed all her stuff inside of her desk, but enough was enough. Her desk was so full that it started to shake. It rattled and lurched like a minor earthquake. Kids ran for their lives and the teachers threw fits, and then Sarah's desk blew itself into bits. Amanda passed the note to Luke, but Mr. Creature snatched it from her hands. Kylie, the artist, was always the best at drawing when she should be taking a test. When a dragon she drew looked so real it blew smoke, the children suspected it might be a joke. But the dragon on paper then leapt from the page. It tore through the room in a flame throwing rage. He has some very interesting stories. Are you not yet convinced? Did I notice a yawn? In case you're in doubt, do let me go on. Listen up. Have you heard of the daydreamer, Zach? His mind wandered off while he took out his snack. So he failed to see the open cage door and he simply ignored little tracks on the floor. And no one else noticed in time to shout freeze that the sandwich he held was a hamster and cheese. Luke jumped when he felt a nibble inside his shirt pocket. Mr. Creature opened another file. Kate always carried her backpack with pride. It made a great place for her monkey to hide. Now everyone knows the no pets allowed rule. When her monkey escaped, it wreaked havoc at school. Then the children all thought they should bring a pet too. Soon the school was a mess and it smelled like a zoo. Wow, some crazy things happened in this story. 
Gavin quietly tied Amanda's shoelaces together. Mr. Creature scowled, then continued. Now this impish fellow, whose nickname was Hank, like most little boys, loved to pull a good prank. He brought in a guppy to enliven the class. But in days it grew teeth that could chomp right through glass. It wouldn't stop growling, its skin became dark. Now Hank really wished he'd not brought in a shark. Mr. Creature paused and gazed upon the silent room. Then he reached in his case one last time. And last we have Chris, a mischievous sort, with the fondness of thieving, I'm sad to report. It seems the poor boy liked to trick for his treats. Dressed like a monster, he scared kids for sweets. But then he stole candy from a magical gnome. Now the trick was on Chris, he could never go home. Never, Amanda gulped. Why? whispered Peyton. Let's read to find out. When he took off his costume, Chris saw the gnome's curse. He had seven green legs and something much worse. A note explained how for the rest of his days, he'd teach other children about wicked ways. Till he repaid his debt, a creature he'd be. And by now you should know, that monster is me. Wow, seems like he learned a powerful lesson. Cool, said Luke. I'm sorry, Mr. Creature, said Amanda. You're the best substitute ever, said Gavin. Mr. Creature spied the clock on the wall. It all happened here half a century ago. At this very school, I thought you should know. Goodbye and good luck, my time here is done. I leave you a gift, a gift for each there is one. The students of Miss Jenkins' class thanked Mr. Creature for the candy and promised never to torment their teacher again. Then Mr. Creature was gone. Outside, Mr. Creature looked in his case and saw that he had one last piece of the candy he had stolen so many years ago. He just needed someone to give it to. Then he noticed a small old man nearby who wore a funny familiar hat. Mr. Creature quietly slipped the candy into the man's pocket. As the substitute creature walked slowly down the windy street, he noticed the sweet smell in the autumn air. It was a smell he remembered from long ago. His tentacles tingled as the smell pulled him forward and the world started to spin around him. He began to run to a small house at the end of the street. I'm noticing that the monster for the creature is starting to change. There, his bike was still leaning by the step and his dog was still waiting on the lawn. Everything was if he had never been gone. Chris was home and he was just in time for a Halloween treat. The end. So that was a pretty cool story. So now let's answer some questions. First, do you think that this is some, a story that could happen in real life? Think about it. Make sure you share your answers with an adult that is near, or you can give a thumbs up for yes or a thumbs down for no. Our next question, who is telling this story? Is there a narrator? Think about how the story happened. Think about what was said in the story. Who do you think is telling this story? Make sure you share your answer with someone that is watching this video with you. My next question that I have is, would you like to be a character from this story? Why or why not? I know you all have some awesome answers. Thank you for reading this book with me. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.